Hello, uh, today uh, we are going to solve uh, an inelastic collision in two dimensions problem. And uh, what we have here is an object of mass M1 uh, that is uh, moving at a vertical velocity V1 uh, downwards, south if you will. We have another object M2 moving uh, horizontally at velocity V2 uh, westward if you will. Uh, and the two objects will somewhere meet, or maybe over here, but we take it from here and we move it here, the next part of the diagram, to have the two objects together, because the collision is inelastic, uh, and they will form now the mass M1 plus M2, so the new object of this mass will move at the velocity V3 that forms an angle theta 3 with the horizontal and we are in quadrant 3 with it. Uh, so uh, we know M1 V1, M2 V2 uh, and we are looking for V3 and theta 3 and again this is an inelastic collision in two dimensions problem. Uh, we are going to follow the strategy that I introduced in my lecture slides which means we need to apply the conservation of momentum which means the total momentum before collision equals the total momentum after collision uh, and we have to separate that into two parts since it's a two-dimensional motion to look at total momentum before collision on the x equals the total momentum after collision on the x and the same for the y. Uh, the only vector that must be resolved in this problem is V3 so we are going to carefully resolve V3 by drawing perpendiculars to the x and the y axis and when we do that, we have a one component going downwards along the y-axis and one component going to the left along the x-axis. Now this component over here is going to be the opposite of theta 3, is the same as this one, so it is V3 sine theta 3. while this component here is the adjacent of the angle theta 3, so it's going to be V3 cosine theta 3. Now let's go ahead and write the two equations for conservation of momentum. So total momentum before collision on the x equals total momentum after collision on the x. Leave some room to develop this equation further and then write the same thing for the y. Total momentum before collision on the y equals total momentum after collision on the y. Now the total momentum means the vector sum of the momenta. Therefore we need to look at our diagram and pick the positive directions for both x and y so we can uh, go by those positive directions in order to do the vector sum. For the x, I see two vectors going along the x-axis, both of them going to the left, so I'm going to pick to the left, show it over here. For the y, I have two vectors, both of them going downwards, so uh, I am going to pick downwards for the y and show it here. So we have down and to the left for the positive directions. Now this being done, we are ready to develop these equations further. So for the momentum, total momentum on the x before collision, we can see that object M1 moves along the y, so it doesn't have x momentum, and object M2 moves along the x with its entire velocity v2, which is positive, so we have a positive M2 v2, and after collision we have the object M1 plus M2 moving with velocity v3 cosine theta 3 in the positive direction as well, so positive M1 plus M2 V3 cosine theta 3, which now uh, becomes a simplifi in simplified form M2 V2 equals M1 plus M2 V3 cosine theta 3. For the y, we have before collision only one object has a y velocity, which is the first one, and it's positive, so we have positive M1 V1. And after collision, 
m1 plus m2 will move with a y velocity v3 sine theta 3 in the positive direction, so it's a positive m1 plus m2 v3 sine theta 3. Simplify this to get m1 v1 equals m1 plus m2 v3 sine theta 3. Now we're going to take this equation and this equation and we are going to divide them. And when we do that, we have, uh, let's um, divide this equation, the second one, by the first one. So if, so let's say that's equation 2 and that's equation 1. So if we divide equation 2 by equation 1, we get m1 v1 over m2 v2 equals m1 plus m2 v3 sine theta 3. divided by m1 plus m2 v3 cosine theta 3. Uh, m1 plus m2 v3 cancel out. Sine over cosine gives me a tangent theta 3. It's going to be equal to m1 v1 over m1 v2. Which means theta 3 will be the tangent inverse. So let's write that down here. Uh, theta 3 equals tangent inverse of m1 v1 over m2 v2. Circle that because it's part of our um, to be determined theta 3 with the question mark. The, the other to be determined is v3 over here. So we can take this theta 3 and substitute it either in equation 2 or in equation 1 and then solve for v3. So I'm just going to go back to maybe equation 3 and I am going to write over here this equation uh, solving for v3 will give me v3 equals m1 v2 I'm sorry, m2 v2 divided by m1 plus m2 times cosine of theta 3. And theta 3 is tangent inverse of uh, this expression here. So we're going to substitute it in here to get our final answer, m2 v2 over m1 plus m2 cosine of tangent inverse of m1 v1 over m2 v2 and that is our answer for v3. So once again we solved an inelastic collision problem when before collision one object was moving south, the other object was moving west. After collision the objects stick together, it's an inelastic collision and the newly formed object of mass m1 plus m2 moves in the third quadrant with speed v3 at an angle theta 3 under the x-axis. We apply the conservation of momentum for both x and y after we resolve v3, and then we eliminated um, v3 by dividing equation 2 by equation 1 to get our angle theta 3, and then we took this angle and we substituted it in this equation. We could have done it on this one as well, that doesn't matter which one you go back to, and then you get this expression for V3. So this is done. Thank you.